All right. Well, this should be dry by now. Today we're going to trim and foot this bowl, and it's been sitting on the wheel for about 10 minutes at least uh, to dry. I'm going to turn the wheel off, make sure I hit the switch, turn the fan off now, move this to the side. I'm going to take this piece of string, oops, and uh, I'm going to, uh, like I'm flossing my teeth, I'm going to choke up on it so I can get underneath here. It's important that you keep this pressed down flat along the bottom of the wheel as you cut underneath that you don't rise up and cut into the bottom of your bowl. With clean hands, you want to carefully, whole-handedly lift this off of here so that you don't taco it up and bend on it. Um, if this was day one and you ran out of time, what you want to do is set your work onto a board and then slide it into a bay. Now, let's say your, your clay was very wet and, and you don't want to wreck it, then, then just lay the, the bag over your bowl like that and then set it somewhere carefully until the next day. But this bowl is dried out enough that we can flip and foot it on a potter's wheel. Now, this one is different. It doesn't have a motor. It has a area at the bottom where I can kick it. I want this to be clean and dry. I'm going to use my wood scraper again, make sure I don't have anything left on here. I'm going to use these uh, rings here to help me center my work as I place it on here. Now, here's a, uh, that, that piece of clay, that area of my bowl that we smeared down on the potter's wheel when it was like this to keep it stuck on the wheel. That area needs to be trimmed off. And I want to put a foot on the bowl, a little ring of clay where my bowl will set on the table. If I hold myself in one spot here and allow this wood stick to scratch, I can see if it's centered or not. It should be touching all the way around. I can see where it's touching more on one side than the other. I'll scoot it just a little way away from that scratch. And that's how you center your clay upside down. You can't go by this area up here. You want to look at the bowl itself, the wall here near the bottom. That looks pretty good, pretty good in the center. Now, to keep this stuck in place, I'm going to chalk it. Um, if you ever jacked up a car and you put these little wedges of wood or plastic by the wheels to keep it from moving, or if you've ever seen an airplane in the airport that have these, that, those are called chalks, and that's just going to keep this from moving while I work on it. So, you want to make sure your shoes are tied when you work with a kick wheel. No loose aprons getting caught up in the axle. And uh, what I'm going to do is start removing some clay at the bottom here. Now don't take a whole lot at one time. You don't want to rip into this and yank it and, and tumble it off the wheel. You still have to be somewhat careful. I'm not doing this one-handed way out here and, and kind of loose with it. I want to be all tucked in again, tight, armpit squeezed, wrists together, my elbows on my thighs, and my hips, just so that I'm all one unit here. And when you're removing clay from the side here, it's called trimming. You know, we, we tried our best when we made this bowl to get a lot of that thick clay down here, lift it up, but it's always a little bit thicker at the bottom than it is towards the rim of your bowl. Now, I like to draw a line right here. And I'll say that I want to subtract some clay down here so that it just sits on that donut-like shape of clay, that ring there. You can't do this when your clay is super wet, and my clay is a little bit wet, so I'm trying to remove anything that starts to come off so it doesn't stick right back onto my bowl. If you've looked at any of the bowls and plates that you have at home, there's often, usually, a ring of clay on which it sets, and it's called a foot. When we talk about pottery, we often use figurative terms like a vase would have a foot, a body, a shoulder, a neck. Now that I've shaped this up a little bit, I'm going to take a sponge, barely wet. I'm going to smooth all that up. After I've trimmed and footed this bowl. I like to use a kick wheel for this because it doesn't move very fast or it doesn't accelerate, accelerate really quickly. I don't have to worry about uh, 
the, the wheel moving too quickly, too fast, and, and, and whipping my work right off the wheel. Believe me, I've, I've seen it happen. Now that I'm done here, it looks pretty good to me. I'm going to slowly stop the wheel. You don't have to put your whole foot on here and have it throw you back. You just want to slowly slow it down. Eventually, all your work should have your full name written on the bottom underside here. Pull our small pieces of clay out of place with clean, dry hands. We want to slowly lift it back up. And you can continue to detail and decorate this bowl if you'd like. And that is the process of trimming and footing a bowl. It takes practice and it takes time. Make sure that you're all lined up and have enough time in the hour before you start something like this so you don't feel pressured and rushed. I hope you enjoyed the demonstration and I wish you a happy throw on the potter's wheel. Take care.